This is a quick walkthrough of Kansas lava. Let's take a first example. We have some random imports to pull in the relevant parts of Kansas lava, and then we have an example. It's a trivial example, just an AND gate, but uh, shows how things are put together inside the lava system. We call it example, it's taking a signal from Boolean to Boolean to Boolean. Uh, around this we have a fabric, the fabric lets us talk to a board, and we have a main driver that lets us generate VHDL that we can put onto a board. So let's fire up the interpreter. And uh, let's check to see what we have. So we have example, and we can run it on a couple of different examples. Hi. Or we can even build a list comprehension. Where we have a, a low a value, a high value, and an undefined value. And then we can build a comprehension around that. You can see the outputs from the different ways of calling the example and if we do this here we can do show x and y with an example we can see the table on lines put stir ln we can see this table between low and high we can also see examples of uh, when the input is undefined sometimes the output is defined only in uh, by one particular input in this case, if either input is low, the output's always high. So, back to the example. Uh, uh, for every example we want to put on a board, we have a, a monad called a fabric. That fabric, in this case, has a, a, some way of talking to switches. You, we grab two of the switches, we call example, which calls a NAND gate, and then we light up the LEDs. We light up three of the LEDs with the input uh, from one switch, input from the second switch, and the output, and replicate low, so we've got five different LEDs that are just going to be off. To generate the uh, fabric for the, VHD, uh, for the uh, FPGA, we call reify fabric, gives us a K-leg, Kansas Lava Entity Graph, and then we write an FPGA circuit, it's going to be called main, it's going to be in the file main.vhdl. We're also going to write a UCF file and lava.vhdl. This is like the prelude, not uh, not critical to understanding this example. So if we go back inside the interpreter, type main, and then we can see what files have been generated. There's other stuff from this example already. But what we can see down here is we have a main.vhdl, a UCF file, which tells us how to connect to the board, and the, uh, the lava prelude. If we have a quick look at VHDL that's come out, we can see we have switches in and LEDs out and lots of gunk that uh, powers the system. So let's fire up our uh, system inside uh, for the Xilinx generation. We've got one we prepared earlier. Uh, this is actually compiling the file we just generated right now. It's very small examples, so you don't only take a few seconds to generate. Typically it takes much, much longer than this. What we can see is we've only actually used one slice out of uh, uh, 9,000 available. Uh, there was a, a, obviously a NAND gate that doesn't take up much space. And uh, we should be just about at the end now. We've uh, now generated the bit file. We then go to a, a separate uh, place, a separate uh, location, and this, this time I'm now on the machine that's connected to the board. And Impact as a tool, and uh, its job is to uh, connect to the board. If we go back here, X11 should bring. And starting up Impact, this is what we see. We can we've got three different devices on this particular board. Uh, the one we're interested in right now is the um, is the FPGA. If we click Program, it'll take the file that uh, we generated and load it onto the FPGA. We can now. I go to the FPGA and see if it's worked. This is the board. The board's just been programmed. We can see it's been programmed because there's a light on. 
and the uh, particular jumper setters there that are defined in the manual to let us uh, program the board through the uh, JTAG connection. This is the virtual JTAG connection and we've programmed the switches here, we've programmed these switches, these two here, to program the LED. So if we press one, we press that, you can see that if you put both on, then the third LED over goes out, but if you put either one of these switches to the off position, then the light stays on, it's a NAND gate as we expected.